you will want to have a seat and enjoy what Barton George has brought for us today. I, I first met Barton at UDSQ when they were starting the Sputnik project. Um, I would like to say, as we introduce him, he's well worth a round of applause because he's been spearheading projects Sputnik within Dell. Dell is one of America's, the world's leading manufacturer of PCs, and Project Sputnik is a major effort to ship PCs with Ubuntu pre-installed. That's very visionary, and the machines are wonderful. I'm looking forward to you telling us about it, Barton. Cool. Thank you so much. Can you hear me? Okay, great. So I'm, thank you very much. I'll try not to yell into the microphone. And I know you all came to hear me. It has nothing to do with the raffle for the free Sputnik after this, so I appreciate it. So anyway, I'm Barton George, I'm from Dell, and I'm here to tell you about the Sputnik story, and really from two main angles. One about how we worked with the community to develop it, and also to give an insight into a large company. How does a $60 billion company, which at one point was in somebody's dorm room and very nimble and could change on a dime, then when it goes to be $60 billion and is, and is set up to deliver millions of PCs, how do they innovate and how might you be able to get something new going there? So the story started with an idea. This wasn't my idea, it wasn't anyone at Dell's idea. We had Stephen O'Grady from Red Monk, if you know him, come in and he basically came in to talk to us about how we might better serve uh, web companies and how we might reach developers. So he said, you know what, there's no major OEM that's offering a pre-installed version of Ubuntu on Linux. And if you guys did that, I think it would be a really great way to curry favor with the developers who are so significant. And I thought, awesome idea, very impractical. You know, as I said, we're tuned to do millions of, of laptops. People here are going to laugh at me when I talk about the thousands that we're going to ship. Um, so I thought, great idea, put it on a shelf, didn't think about it for a while until... I learned about the Dell Innovation Fund. And so this was started by Michael Dell's EA, and he said, there's probably a lot of folks within Dell who have great ideas locked up in their heads. Why don't we act as an internal angel fund, bring people in front of us, they can pitch ideas. If we like it, we can give them a tiny pot of money, give them six months to try and uh, prove out their theory and see if it actually can become real. So I went, I was the first one to present, and this is basically the highlights of what I was presenting. And this type of, uh, these type of ideas maybe are not so strange or foreign to people in this room, but once again, to a large company like Dell, these were kind of freaky, right? The whole idea of involving the community, and more importantly, not involving the community behind closed doors. The idea wasn't, let's bring them all in under NDA, ask them what they want, and then tell them they can't tell anybody else, and then come out with a product. The idea here was, let's do this out in the open through social media, through my blog, through Twitter, and let people know how we're going and how we're doing it every step of the, of the way. And of course, we did want to sell some of these, because we are a business, but the greater return to the business was actually in getting mindshare with developers and also changing perceptions, getting people to think that, hey, Dell does have a clue. It does understand uh, what the developers want. So obviously, I presented this. People knew it was an amazing idea. Uh, not really. So they peppered me with all sorts of questions. You're proposing what? Now, why is this a good idea? Couldn't HP do the same thing? We tried this before, blah, blah, blah. So they went away and they thought, deliberated for about a month, six weeks, and then finally on the Ides of March, that is auspicious day, uh, I got the green light. So this is how we approached it. Now I said we wanted to do this out in the open. That being said, we had a don't embarrass ourselves uh, phase in the beginning. Because the idea was we didn't want to come out and say, hey, here's this laptop we'd like your input on and have people in the community go, wow, Dell just does not get it. That is a stupid idea. So we started with three alpha cosmonauts, three developers in Austin. I don't know if Dustin Kirkland is here. He was one of the, the strong, the proud, the first three who gave input. Once we got that and got their thoughts, we then went out, took this to two large web companies on the West Coast and said to them, what do you think of this? And so while they didn't say, okay, we'll put in an order for 10,000, they did say, that sounds like a pretty, pretty interesting idea. When you get further along, please come back and, and talk to us. So with that, we went 
and we tinkered, we got things ready, we rode a bunch of uh, drivers, all those except for the, um, uh, the touchpad. That was something that, was, that took us a lot longer than we had hoped. And so we put out an ISO and we announced it. And so we announced it on my blog and you can see, well, it's, these are pretty small, but you can see the whopping numbers of viewers I had on my blog, 65, 99, whoa, 174. Uh, so obviously I was one of the top blogs in the uh, blogosphere at that time. So, but then, so this is May 6th, May 7th, bam! Okay, so all of a sudden they go up to 6,000, 9,000, 15,000, and over the total life of this blog entry, I've now had over 70,000 views. And so once again, to put it into perspective, my average uh, total life views before Project Sputnik was about 500. So this is a little bit more than I, I had before. So the same day we did this and, and launched it, we also launched something called Idea Storm. And basically, this is a forum where you can put in ideas, vote them up or down as far as what you think is, is appropriate. And so these are the, the top six things that we, we heard from folks. A lot of them are not that fancy, right? So don't make it more expensive than Windows. Um, no Windows pre-installed. It seems to be pretty obvious. But uh, we, had, we had made a foray into this before and it hadn't gone as well as we had hoped. At that point, it was a different positioning. We thought, well, not we. Some people thought that, hey, free OS, let's put it on our cheapest machine, we'll able, be able to sell at a real low price point. So people bought it for their moms, their mom freaked out, we got all these things shipped back to us. So the idea with Sputnik is, hey, developers aren't going to get Ubuntu because it's free, it's because that's the OS that they want. So why don't we put it on our highest end system? So, and then because, you know, getting back to these processes and procedures of Dell that work great for when you're making millions and are kind of trickier when you're doing small things, what would happen at different times through the machine, the mechanism that is Dell, they would run, say, a promo on Windows, which would drop the price, which all of a sudden, so it was here, all of a sudden Ubuntu would look more expensive. And that was just because of all the, as I said, the processes. And so that was a big black eye. So we wanted to make sure that wouldn't happen again. So that was a gathering of feedback. And then we went into beta. So the first thing, because everyone uses their tongue for a touchpad, we wanted to make sure that we had the touchpad driver. So we worked with Kamal at Can Canonical. We worked with Mario on our side and then Cyprus uh, to work on, on getting this together. So we were able to deliver this, and once we did, and pushed it up to the 3.9 kernel, we then said, okay, let's expand, and we need more cosmonauts. So we went out to the beta cosmonauts, <clears throat> and we said, okay, we want you, if you're interested, please fill out this form. And it wasn't just a tick box, yes, I'm interested. It was, how big is a company you work for? What kinds of applications do you work on? What type of system do you have? What type of industry, et cetera, et cetera. And as you see there, we've got uh, 6,000 people from around the world. And that was really the tipping point. We said, if this many people in the community are interested in this, let's make this a real product. So that being said, boom. We had promised it worldwide when we went back to the team that said they could execute on this to make the, the beta units available worldwide, we found out that it was going to be much more difficult than we thought. And we had to think about um, doing a trade-off. Do we stick with what we said we would do, which would probably, given the resources it would take to do that, would push the launch out, or do we come back and say, hey, we screwed up and we're only going to be able to do it in the States so that we can make the, the launch sooner. So we went with uh, the mea culpa um, and apologized for it. So with that, nine months later, we finally launched. And I say finally. It, to develop a product from green light PowerPoint slides, open office, LibreOffice slides, to, um, to launch is, is, is pretty fast in Dell. Now, as an aside, not only did we want to make a developer laptop, we had some grandiose plans. We were going to create a profile tool. Basically, these are going to be language stacks that you would, you know, Ruby, Android, etc., that you'd be able to pull down from GitHub and then install on your system. We were also going to do a cloud launcher. You'd develop in micro clouds, and then you'd push to the, to the clouds itself. 
Well, we soon found that this was a bit tricky, so we were going to focus on the profile tool. And man, we tried this so many different times. And on my blog, I, every so often I'd say, no, this time it's real. Now we've got the real resources and we're really going to make this happen. And unfortunately, it just stayed perpetually under uh, construction. We had to come back and say, hey, sorry that we're not able to do it. So back to our main story. How was it received? We got a, little, uh, we got a lot of great press. Wall Street Journal, O'Reilly Radar, TechCrunch, and this is my favorite from Ars Technica. Uh, Dell's substantial investment pays off. It was myself, it was Jared here, a dog, and somebody else basically that, that put this thing together. But it it's great. Yeah, and his bunny, right? So it's great to, to see that we sort of cast a big shadow. And then on the interwebs, here's just some of the tweets we got. I think my favorite is that DFED said, spoiled by my Dell Sputnik Linux laptop on Mac today, feel like I'm computing with crayons. Um, and then this is my absolute favorite on the bottom. Well, I did something I never thought I would. I bought a brand new high-end Dell laptop for full price, me. Hell will be freezing over shortly. So that gets back to that wanting to change perceptions. But not everybody was always happy. Here's a friend of ours in Denmark. This is on, um, on Google+. Plus. Basically, uh, he read an article, went to try and find this on the, the, the Danish site, and he couldn't. That's Denmark. Ooh, I guess you don't ship these models to Denmark, fuck asses. Not the first time it happens. That is why I never buy Dell products, never ship the products, and see a bigger profit. Uh, and this kind of stuff happens every so often in communities. If you're part of one, you might be familiar with it. Um, so I came back, and after I sort of cooled down, walked around the block a couple times, came back to my keyboard and said, hey, the M3800 with Ubuntu should be definitely available in Denmark. I shot off an email to the team to find out what's going on. Thanks for flagging it. Stay tuned. And then once you acknowledge it and you, and you realize and you share the fact that there is an issue and you're going to look at it, you come back very nicely. Sounds really nice, Barton George. Thanks for the quick answer. And I think that's one thing I found through this process is eight out of 10, nine out of 10 times when people would flame us for how stupid we were and how lame our execution was, you'd come back and you just explain, hey, we were really trying to do it this way. It didn't work out or let me look into that for you. Um, they, uh, they toned way down and oftentimes they'd become supporters. So remember that, that great dream we had? Well, we didn't quite execute on it, but as history would happen, serendipitously, this thing Docker came along. And so this is now creating that micro cloud that we talked about. Uh, and it really has then uh, been able to deliver that, this uh, client to cloud solution that we had hoped for. And then coming to a uh, Dell.com to you, uh, Dell.com near you shortly, here's the fifth generation, and this is the one, if you saw it outside by the table, it looks just like this, the one that's coming out. It just has a faster processor and a few other neat things. Um, and so the one we're raffling off, it will be the new one when it comes out. And then we have a second one of the Precision laptop, um, and that will be coming out as well, which is actually based on the work that Jared did uh, back in the day. We, we, he went and um, put together a hack for how you'd run this on the precursor to this. Um, and it, then it became a real boy the next year after we, we did all the work. So just to, to wrap up with, what were the, the lessons that we take away, from, once again, from trying to develop at a large company and, and working with the community? First one is both get a champion and be a champion. And what I mean by this is, in a champion, we had Michael Dell's EA. and so that name sort of carried us through quite a bit. That being said, if you ever work at a large company, sometimes the stuff that the CEO or their people say doesn't work all the way down at the bottom. They just say, yeah, whatever, he's so many layers up, they'll never catch me. Um, so you also need to be very much a champion for yourself. So particularly in the beginning when we started this, the zombies would come out every so often and try and kill this. And I can see how they, they would think about that because oftentimes at a big company, you don't even have enough resources to do your project. And thinking about this project, taking away resources uh, would make them angry. So that being said, this has gotten much and much easier as we've gone on. And the number of people popping up and saying, why are you doing this, has really tapered off. Second thing, 
is leverage and execute. So the idea doesn't have to be your own. It's more important that the idea you have or the idea you take is one that you can actually execute on. Awesome ideas are a dime a dozen. Um, and so when you're talking about executing, if you want to be successful, it's really important to start small. So when, we first, when I first pitched this, I had kind of grandiose ideas. We'd do a Beauty and the Beast lined up. We'd have multiple configs of each. And luckily, somebody talked me out of it and said, you know what, to launch, pick one system, pick one config, and then you can go from there. And, and we have every year. We've expanded more. Um, the other thing is just don't overpromise. Err on the side of caution. And I think this is true of a lot of products, even within Dell. We feel because we're a big company, we have to come up with these huge boil the ocean plans. And oftentimes what happens is they collapse under their own weight. Number four, turning to the community, be humble, be human. Um, as I said, this was a bit of a different approach in that we were doing all this out in the open and, and getting feedback. So speak directly and be transparent. And then as like our friend in Denmark, and there's more than that, there was other people as well. Don't write off anyone too soon. Like I said, you might have to go away from the keyboard and cool down for a bit. And then last but not least, no one is perfect. So it, it's not are you going to screw up, it's when you screw up, how are you going to recover? So basically, you need to own it, right? We had a couple of screw-ups here. We had the biggest ones being the, hey, we're going to do this worldwide. Oh, psych, we're not going to. And then the other one was this grandiose plans, like I said, for the profile tool and the cloud launcher. So that is the end of my presentation. I think we might 